immigrants staying in the country after President Obama's executive order are now eligible for tax breaks and benefits. And it's going to cost you, the taxpayer, billions of dollars in retroactive refunds. Senator Rand Paul joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay, are we talking about money that um, if, if, if an illegal person worked in the country and overpaid his taxes and gets refunds, we're not talking about that, right? Well, we are talking about refundable tax credits, earned income tax credits, uh, additional child tax credits, but it's in the billions of dollars. And here it is. We, you know, remember last year we talked about immigration reform. There was a bill in the Senate that passed. Even that bill said that you wouldn't be able to get it for a period of time. Now you're getting it immediately. You come into the country illegally. This executive order that the president had, he's going to give Social Security numbers immediately, and they will be eligible for these tax, right. these tax refunds. Just so I understand, though, this isn't money that they paid in and they're getting a refund from them. These are, this is above and beyond? I think what it is is the earned income tax credit. So it's a refundable tax credit or an additional child tax credit. Part of the problem with this system, though, is you don't even have to prove that the kids are either with you or that they exist. So the earned income tax credit and the additional child tax credit have a 25 percent improper payment rate. One out of four dollars spent in this program is not necessarily accounted for properly. All right. So uh, are you going to do something about it? We're going to try to. There's a bill that uh, Senator Ayotte introduced last year that's trying to make it more certain that you are here properly, that you're here. And we've had some discussions in Homeland Security, um, and I know Senator Ayotte's very interested in this, and I'm going to try to help and support her on that. Okay. Um, the Attorney General of the United States, with President as a new nominee, Loretta Lynch, um, have you decided how you're going to vote? I can't vote for her. And so that's a no. That's a no. The, the big issue for me is something called civil forfeiture. Civil forfeiture turns justice on its head. Instead of being innocent until proven guilty, you're guilty until you can prove that you're innocent. The government takes your cash, $1,000, $100, $500, whatever it is. This program predominantly has targeted black individuals, poor individuals, Hispanic individuals. And when Senator Lee asked her about it in the committee, she said, oh, no, as long as there's a valid court order. You don't have to be convicted. You don't even have to be charged. They can take your possessions, a hotel, house. There was one house in Philadelphia taken recently. Teenage son was selling $40 worth of illegal drugs. They took a $200,000 house and evicted the family. But often it's poor families in the inner city, and I wish she had a little more concern for people who live in poverty before taking their stuff. All right. Um, last night I tweeted a picture. Uh, actually, I retweeted your picture of you getting a shot, a vaccine. We're yep. in the vaccine gate. Actually, the picture is now up on the screen. Um, you're getting it. Now, um, you, you get vaccines. I get vaccines. I went overseas recently, got some. Uh, what's um, the controversy? You know, I got annoyed that people were trying to depict me as someone who uh, didn't think vaccines were a good idea. You and I have talked about my trip to Guatemala. I got vaccinated for that. I got vaccinated as a kid. I vaccinated my, my kids. I don't have an objection at all to that. But it, I got somehow depicted as I'm somehow someone who doesn't believe in vaccines, and I wanted to make sure they knew I was getting my booster vaccine. Uh, you know, it's something it's like, um, I know that when I go overseas and they say, do you, want, do you want to get a vaccine for yellow fever? I always say, sure, I'll take it. I'll right. take everything. I mean, there are some vaccines that, you know, where diseases have been eradicated. Clearly, m measles have not. We've got it right. here. I mean, so the, there's sort of, it, to me, it's like, you know, there's some that, you know, seem like a real necessity just so that if I get measles, I'm not going to spread right. it to you. Right. I think everyone should be encouraged to get vaccines. But the interesting debate that sort of people missed on this is of all the political people they talk to, I'm not sure I'm any different than the president or anybody else on the position. We have rules to encourage people to have vaccines in the country, but I don't think anybody's uh, recommending that we hold them down. What we have is, um, you know, when you I enter think, school, you're encouraged to take them. You can't enter school without some, having taken them. But some don't you think we're necessarily like the measles? If I've got the measles and I'm going to go spread it to all the kids in the class and the pregnant women, shouldn't I have to get them? I mean, yeah, shouldn't no, I, I mean, something like that. Right. I mean, and some are real we, health crises. And the way we've policed it is through school. Basically, you can't go be among the other kids unless you've had your vaccinations. And that is a way of uh, trying. It's an encouragement and somewhat of a mandate. But it's really been more of an encouragement that people get it. But interestingly, 48 out of 50 states do have a uh, religious as well as philosophic exemption if you have a problem. But for the most part, you need the vast majority of people to take a vaccine. That's how you get immunity for everyone. Well, I get them anyway. Anyway, and, and you got yours. Anyway, Senator, thank you, sir. And President Obama making a big promise.